they came back to see part two! Yay! I'm very happy you want to learn more worlds without number with me. I recommend you watch the character creation video first before watching this one. The reason why is because I go over tons of important rules. I also go over the system quick reference sheet there too. That's really important and saves us a lot of time. Welcome to Pack Tactics. I'm thrilled you're here. Me too! This is about your actions, what they're called and what they do and some extra stuff. You do want to know all of this because knowing it makes the game flow faster and also you'll learn the system language. Like for example snap attack, what's a snap attack? We'll find everything out, all we need to do is read like 6 pages. All the other stuff is already covered in the first video. As for mounting and crafting rules, those can be videos but that's if this series is super successful so please like, share and subscribe. This is not a popular system and it deserves respect. Let's start. Scene. This is the basic measurement for most effect durations. A scene is simply one general event or activity. A single fight is a scene. Infiltrating a smuggler's warehouse is a scene. Negotiating with a merchant prince is a scene and so forth. Most scenes last no longer than 15 minutes or so, some DMs stretch it out. Some features like veteran's luck has a once per scene usage. If you use it and then the scene ends like an encounter, you get your feature back unless it says otherwise. So obviously you want to use features like that in every scene. 4th edition players are very familiar with this. And then we have a turn, a common measurement of time. Each turn lasts 10 minutes and is equivalent to one scene for those situations when it matters. Don't mix this with a combat round by the way, that's 6 seconds. Two different things. Now we're actually at combat. Initiative. I did cover it already, but it's just a reminder. At the start of combat, each side rolls initiative once on 1d8 and adds the best dexterity modifier on their side. The highest rolling group goes first. Ties goes to the PC. Individual initiative is an optional rule. Now some of you might be like, this is confusing, initiative is 1d8, rolling skills is 2d6, and rolling attacks is 1d20. Listen, it's not a big deal, after two sessions you'll remember it. Before we continue, we need to know how opposed skill checks work, so we're gonna jump at skills quickly. Sometimes a PC wants to accomplish something that another character wants to prevent. In such cases, all participants roll their relevant skills and the highest score wins. With ties going to the PC. It's really simple. Those of you who've played Call of Cthulhu understand this right away. Surprise! Generally, if the group is alert for danger, an ambush has to either crash down on them suddenly or come from an angle or location they never suspected. If the DM decides that surprise is possible, an opposed wisdom notice versus dexterity sneak skill check should be rolled. If the attackers win, they surprise the targets and get a full round of action to themselves before initiative is rolled and the combat progresses as usual. An ambush might also provoke a morale check in undisciplined or unmilitary targets at the DM's discretion. This is stronger than five because execution attack and morale check are both mechanics. But anyways, like 5e, you want to stealth as much as you possibly can. Having a full round of action will destroy the encounter. If you can get away with fighting safely, then obviously do it. But before we continue, this video is sponsored by the Ethereal Expand Setting Guide. Just like the previous video. Sail your ship across a magical sea of ethereal liquid. This is an epic setting for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. It's over 200 pages long. Tons of lore and adventure ideas for your campaign in this alien world. These adventure hooks are not for catching fishies. Fishies! Tons of new player options, including 12 new subclasses, new magic items, and many brand new mechanics like the Heritage Trait System, which allows you to build your character species with over 
50 different traits to pick from. And best of all, ship rules. So you can build your own crew, upgrade your ships, and have ship combat. Cobalt, I want to go fishing for fishies. I'm down for that. There's over 30 new monsters, and some of them are evil fishies that kill people. So we should kill them. Bad fishies, bad. Bad fishies, indeed. Anyways, the ethereal expanse is coming soon on Kickstarter. Stay tuned tuned for an adventure that's completely out of this world. Back to the video. Now for actions in combat. We have four actions. A main action, move action, on turn action, and instant action. Main action, you know what that is. Making an attack, casting a spell, first aid, and so on. Move action, you usually have 30 foot movement. If you climb, swim, or cross difficult terrain, it's half movement. You can take a main action to run. That's dashing. You know what that is. Disengage is called fighting withdrawal. That's also a main action. If you move out of a melee enemy's reach, they can then take a free instant action to punish you. Free! Sometimes in 5e, it's optimal to bait opportunity attacks for multiple reasons. Here you can't do something like that because it's free, it just has to trigger. You also can't split the movement action. It's not possible to move 10 feet, shoot an enemy with a main action, and then move another 20 feet behind cover like 5e. That's gonna throw me off personally because it's in my muscle. I always take cover. Lastly, there's no rules for grids from what I can find in the free version. But I assume it's just if you move one square, then you moved five feet. Depending on the DM, it might be different for diagonal movement, so talk to your DM. On turn action is basically your bonus action. Falling prone, saying a few words, in some cases reloading, drawing out a readied object, or similar things are on turn actions. You can only take this action on your turn, but what's interesting is you can potentially take multiple on turn actions if the DM thinks it's reasonable. Like for example, pulling out two daggers. Instant action, this is your reaction. You can even do it off your turn. You can also use it after the dice have been rolled. There is no limit to the number of instant actions a participant can take, but of course there needs to be a trigger like an opportunity attack. Attacking a foe, that's a main action. First you roll to hit, that's a 1d20, and then you add your relevant combat skill, class attack bonus, and your relevant modifier. So if I shoot my crossbow, I roll a 1d20 plus 3. How I got a 3 is I look at both of these. It's pretty straightforward. If I had a level 0 shoot, then I would have a minus 2 penalty. Same applies to stab and all that. I think I mentioned this in the first video. Anyways, you know how AC works, but if you miss with a melee attack, you can still inflict shock damage if the weapon has a shock rating and the target's AC is equal or lower than it. If you hit, you roll damage. For me, that's 1d10 plus my relevant attribute mod, which is 1. Next, non-lethal. Some attacks may not be lethal in nature. If a non-lethal attack reduces a target to zero hit points, the attacker can choose to simply have their victim be knocked unconscious or helpless, unable to act and reviving 10 minutes later with one hit point. Attacks that are psychic or emotional in nature may reduce their victim to helpless shock or numbing confusion when they bring them to zero hit points. Likewise, incapacitating them for 10 minutes. Next, here are the circumstance mods for like cover and stuff. It's nice they made it really easy to see right away. Shock damage, I talked about this before in the other video, but to refresh I'll cover it again. Basically, if the creature has a set AC, you can do automatic damage, kind of like half on a safe spell but weaker. Like in this example, it says if the target has 15 AC or lower, then you do 2 damage. If you hit the creature and do damage and it's less than the shock damage, then you use the shock damage instead. You also add your weapons attribute mods to the shock by the way. Dual wielding weapons, you need at least stab one skill in order to do this. It gives you a plus two bonus to damage rolls with no extra shock, but you get a minus one penalty on attacks. Shoving and grappling, here we go. To shove, you have to hit the target normally for no damage and then make an opposed strength punch or strength assert skill check. 
If you succeed, the enemy is forced back up to 10 feet or knocked prone. To grapple, you have to hit the target with an unarmed attack doing no damage and then make an opposed strength punch skill check. If you win, then you've grappled the enemy. The target can use their main action to break free, but then both of you have to make another opposed check. You can only grapple one target at a time, but multiple people can grapple the same target. And in that case, their skill check is compared against everyone grappling them. When grappling, both of you can't move and both of you can only really make unarmed attacks or break free. At the end of each round in which the target remains grappled, they suffer damage from each attacker as if hit with an unarmed attack from each foe grappling them. That sounds kind of good. I have no idea if it is good, but it does sound good. If you try to grapple larger creatures, then you have a minus two penalty on the skill check. In some cases, it's minus four. Execution attack, I brought this up in the other video, but not really all of it. It takes a minute to set up the prep to do an execution. And then once done, your ranged attack requires a dex shoot skill check against a difficulty of six for a point blank shot, eight for one at weapons normal range, and 10 for a shot at extreme range. If you're making a melee attack, then it's an auto hit. If the execution attack hits, the target must make a immediate physical saving throw at a penalty equal to the attacker's combat skill level. If they fail, they are mortally wounded on the spot or knocked unconscious if the attacker was using a plausible, non-lethal weapon. If they succeed, the weapon still does its maximum damage. Now we're at the last part, common combat actions. Some of them I've already covered, like making an attack, casting a spell, run, reload a weapon, and fighting withdrawal. Here's something new, snap attack. If you haven't used your main action in a round yet, you can snap attack, be it ranged or melee. It can be immediately at the start of the round or just an instant action. You take a minus four penalty to the hit roll though. This is your extra attack, basically. Swarm attack. I had a hard time understanding this, to be honest. It's very new to me. From my understanding, this is kind of like help action, but way different. You can have up to four of your friends hold a main action to focus fire on an enemy. If it's just you and Steve, then you can make an immediate melee or ranged attack against the target, gaining a plus two bonus to hit and plus one damage. If four of your friends are doing this and one of you gets a plus six to hit and plus three damage. It doesn't add to shock by the way. This is mainly useful for DMs rather than players most of the time. Charge. This takes both your move and your main action. You move up to twice your normal speed in a straight line before making a melee or throw attack at plus two to hit. You must be able to move at least 10 feet to get the requisite momentum and suffer a minus two AC penalty for the rest of the round. This is pretty good for getting into melee or charging down archers. Next, shatter a shield, it costs a main action. To shatter a shield, the attacker must be using an ax, mace, or other crushing or hewing attack. The maneuver requires a successful hit roll and then an opposed strength stab skill check between the attacker and the defender, with the defender gaining a plus one bonus to their check. No damage is done, but if the attacker wins, then the shield will be broken. Magical shields can't be broken this way. Patching a damaged shield takes a scene's work and crafting zero skill. This is largely beneficial because if you remember, first instance of shock in a round is ignored. And if you remove that, then doing shock damage is easier for everyone and it's easier to hit the target as well. Also, just to remind you about large shields on its own it grants 14 AC. If the enemy is wearing better armor than that then the shield grants a plus one AC. Next, screen an ally. This is a tank feature. It costs a move action. The PC moves up to their move rate towards an ally and then physically blocks opponents from attacking them, provided they remain within 10 feet. Until the PC's next turn, enemies who wish to make a melee or ranged attack against the screened ally must succeed in a 
a successful strength or dex based opposed skill check against the PC using the combat skill applicable to their weapon. On a failure, the attack roll is automatically directed towards the screening PC. A PC can screen against a number of attackers in one round equal to their combat skill. Thus, Stab 2 lets them block the attacks of two different attackers. PCs with level 0 or worse combat skills can't effectively screen. This is a super duper good feature. I want this in 5e as a default feature for marshals. Tanking exists in this system. Anyways, multiple PCs can try to screen the same ally. In such a case, the attacker's skill check is compared against all blockers and the lowest rolling successful blocker is attacked. PCs can only screen against foes and attacks they could plausibly physically parry or block with a shield. I, I think this is reasonable. Next, total defense. This is your dodge action and shield spell put together in one feature. It's an instant action. You become immune to shock damage for the round, even from swarm attacks, and you get a plus two AC bonus until your next turn. However, it also costs a main action. So as soon as it's your turn, you can't take any main action if you have this active. I really like this. It will have quite a few uses besides being a panic button like doorway blocking. Using a skill as a main action, obviously. Dropping an item is an instant action. Picking up an item is a move action. Here's the help action for skills. It grants a plus one bonus. Multiple PCs helping is still a plus one bonus. Go prone is an on turn action. Distant range attackers take a minus two penalty to hit you. Adjacent melee enemies gain a plus two to hit. Standing up is a move action. Hold an action costs a move action. By choosing to hold an action, the combatant can delay taking the rest of their actions until later in the round, activating them as an instant action. It's straightforward. Delay an action, this is an on-turn action. The combatant simply chooses to delay the remainder of their actions this turn until after a particular other participant has acted. Such a pause may be needed for some tactical plan or to respond to a particular enemy's action. Unlike hold an action, however, they cannot suddenly choose to act earlier than their chosen place in the turn order. They must wait until the participant they chose has acted before using whatever remaining actions they may have for the turn. That's all the actions! We're done now. You should be able to play the game now. You know all the important rules, you know how to make a character, you know how skills work, you know how initiative works, you know how to make an attack, and you know all of the actions you can take. If we put both videos together, we managed to cover all of this in less than an hour. That's super duper optimal. Very beginner friendly, I think. If you really like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Like I said, this is not a popular system, and I would love to continue with this series and look into magic. And then after that, maybe into DMing stuff. The DM stuff is the system's biggest strength, actually. It's full of really, really good advice, and I highly recommend you go through it in your spare time. You'll learn a ton of new things. Anyways, end of video. Bye-bye!